Hey Five Fans, it's Thursday. Hi, I am Genevieve from Five Awesome Way Fans, and this is Max. And we are interviewing Cassandra Clare, writer of City of Bones, uh, City of Ashes, and City of Glass, and Mason McMahon, writer of Wake and Fade. What is the hardest and the easiest part about writing books? The hardest part some days is actually starting to write and opening up that Word document and actually getting the, the document open and ready to go. That's hard. Um, easiest? Uh, you let me know when you think of something. Yeah, easy. there's nothing easy. <laughs> yeah, I would say the hardest part is um, being there's that it's such a solitary occupation and you're alone all the time and you pretty much have to set your own schedule. And if no one else is making you work, then you won't, you know, then you have to make yourself work. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite book that you've written? Whether it's one that's been published or not published. Oh, do you? Um, I have not f completed any books that are not published. I would start stuff and then never finish it, so, yeah, you know, like three or four chapters of things. Um, and I get the favorite book of mine is always the one that I've just written, so at the moment my favorite book is City of Glass, but hopefully <laughs> soon my favorite book will be The Club Book Princess. I, I probably love Wake uh, the best. It was just so fresh and fun to, to write, and it came out really, really fast, so I love that process. It was good. you come up with Jason's name? I needed a name that could be initials because one of the plot points in the book turns on the fact that his uh, initials are JC. Um, so I could have gone with Tace and had his name be TC or something like that, but I went through sort of a short list of, or I could have had it be Casey and had his you know, initials be Casey, but I went through a sort of a list of them and I decided that of them all, Jace was my favorite. It's a very unique name. Yeah, I like it. I, like it. I find it charming and I also like that it was short for Jonathan because that's one of my favorite names. And it fits with his character. Yes, he is definitely a Jace. Lisa. After um, Gone, do you have anything afterwards? I do. I have another book that I have under contract with Simon Pulse, and it is um, another paranormal young adult book. It's going to be a little creepy. It's going to be different, no dreams. Um, and that is due to come out in 2011, but I don't have it written yet. So I hope, I hope after tour, when I get back and rest up a little bit, I'm going to get started writing that one. Team Zombie or team, team Unicorn? If you watch our videos, yeah. you'd know that. There's kind of a big debate. Yeah. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. Hi, yeah. Anne Holly and I invented the yeah. debate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. I stolen. would like to say my debate has been stolen. <laughs> it and has been stolen. John yeah. Green then adopted our debate and ran with it. He's, he's a stealer, John. Okay. <laughs> and um, actually, I am on Team Zombie officially because Polly sold an anthology of stories to Simon and Schuster um, of zombie and unicorn stories, half zombies, half unicorns. It's a flip book, so the one side is zombies, and then you flip it over, and the other side is unicorns. And I am on Team Zombie. I'm writing a zombie story. Oh, very cool. So unicorn people. I, okay. Ooh, I'm not. A, what if I don't like either one? I am afraid of zombies. The, uh, I don't. I'm not very zombie proof. I took the test. I'm only 37 percent, mm -hmm. and I'm really afraid they're gonna get me. And I'm also afraid of fire. That's my other fear. And so zombies on fire are the worst thing ever. Um, unicorns. Yeah, you know that reminds me of like you know rainbows and junk. And I hate rainbows. I'm totally team ninja or team pirate. How was it uh, finding out when you were first on the vessel? <coughs> and is it as cool as it sounds? Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, it's you got happy feeling. Ever? Oh yeah, that was um, that was for Fade. Yes, we got Cappy, the little kitty, Captain, named after Captain in the book because she thinks she's in charge of everything. Uh, but yes, that was my prize for being on the list for five weeks. Um, but yeah, the first time I found out that we were on the New York Times bestseller list with Wake, that was unbelievable. There was a much jumping up and down and shouting and saying, no way. <laughs> it's yes. pretty exciting. It is. I remember my agent calling me and saying, you better sit down. <laughs> and then telling me, and then I called everyone in my family, and they sort of cared in various levels. I know. It's so funny. My mom was like, that's oh, great. Oh, whatever. My dad was like, you can't have my money or my car even when I'm dead. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know I was slipping out every time you'd update your blog, Lisa, about saying the next time. Oh, I was because like, you were, oh, were you going for the yeah. kitty? Yeah, like you have to get the kid. You 
I think Kitty's very kid. boring. I was really worried that we weren't going to make it that this week, you know? So I was like, damn, what if we don't make it? Everybody's going to be sad. <laughs> I think I had my husband talk to actually getting a kitty anyway. How do you like keep in contact with other authors and like what sites? And does it like, help yeah, you? Yeah, because it's a secret author site. Yeah. yeah. Kidding. Um, there's some mailing lists and stuff that for authors and we talk about the business and stuff. Um, um, there's also, at least in New York City, there's a monthly night when we all meet um, and have drinks together on the or night. But mostly you meet people through other people, you meet them at conferences, you meet them because they're friends of friends, and then uh, you become friends and you hang out together. Mm -hmm. It's great. I mean, one of the best things about being an author is meeting other authors. Yep. It sounds like you have a large support network there because, I mean, you in your acknowledgement, do you think the people that other authors? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they're all yeah. helpful to me, and they've read my books and given me critique. And, and sometimes they're inspiring too. So, you know, yeah, yeah, inspiring just by just by being here. It is. I, I feel so <laughs> inspired. Feel inspired. I want to just go right back to the <laughs> and write a book That's called right. called The Beautiful Cassandra. That's actually the title of a book I wrote when I was twelve. So at least it's not being entertained to me. Now I'm in trouble. Who be the Cassandra too? Um, nobody who read The Beautiful Cassandra would, would, would blame you. It's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm sure there'd be a lot of people that would be willing to read that book. I read it out loud at a library function like two weeks ago with David Lampan and Scott Westerfeld and Holly Black. We were all reading the stuff that we read when we were like 10 or 11 years old. It was awesome. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have been Scott was the yeah. worst. He won the King of Suck and he had to wear a feathery crown. <laughs> So, Cassandra, what are you recommending today? Um, I'm recommending two great books that I read last year. Um, both, um, I read them both in advanced reader copies and was totally blown away by them. The first is The Forest of Hands and Teeth by Carrie Ryan, and it is a story of the zombie apocalypse and a beautiful romance that takes place in a town that is completely surrounded by zombies. It makes more sense than it sounds like it does. And um, the second is The Hunger Games, which you've probably heard of, but if not, it is a fantastic book that takes place in a post-apocalyptic future world where a girl named Katniss is forced to join The Hunger Games, which is a tel like a televised reality program where she has to basically fight other teenagers to the death in order to survive. And I recommend them both very highly.